Hello, this is uh, Professor Joseph Holbrook. Today we're going to talk about uh, forms and functions of government from Chapter 13 of uh, the Social Experience, Introduction to Social Science for Miami-Dade College, ISS 1120. So uh, it just, it's in good timing because tonight is the uh, d first debate for the Democrat candidates for president, Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, Martin O'Malley, so I hope you'll watch that tonight. Uh, let's begin talking about the forms and functions of government. There are five major purposes for government. The first one is to maintain internal order and external security. Um, as you can Imagine external security right now is a big topic with uh, lots of illegal immigration. Also, we have uh, the war on terror in many parts of the world. So ex external security is a hot topic for our society. Maintaining internal or order can also include uh, the issue of uh, illegal immigration, the uh, the uh, frequent shootings, school shootings, uh, movie theater shootings uh, is another internal threat. Crime is a threat. Uh, these are, this is one of the major functions of government is to take care of these two areas, external and internal. Another one is to ensure justice, to make sure that the guilty are punished and the innocent are exonerated. Uh, this doesn't always happen, but uh, our society is set up to try to attempt to assure justice to the individual. Also safeguarding individual freedoms. We don't want to live in a totalitarian society. We have certain freedoms, so freedom of worship, freedom of conscience, freedom of assembly, freedom of, of expression, and these are important. Um, also to regulate individuals' actions to the degree that an individual's actions may be a threat to others. Uh, this is a part of the government's responsibility. And finally, to promote the general welfare. So this would include such things as education, the economy, um, infrastructure development. All these things are part of the uh, general welfare. There are three predominant views of government. The role of government. One is that government is a necessary evil. We need government, but uh, as little as possible, just enough to, to ensure those five functions. Another predominant view is government is a positive good, that government is a good thing for human society and we need more of it. And the last one is that government is an unnecessary evil. In other words, we'd be better off to abolish government and do without it. These go through three. Uh, these go with three kinds of ideologies that you see below here: uh, conservatism, liberalism, and libertarianism, or a more extreme form would be anarchism. Uh, if you line these up, uh, which one do you think would go with which view of government? If you said that conservatism would go with the first one, government as a necessary evil, you would be correct. Conservatives usually want small government but they're not opposed to some degree of government. Often some conservatives are in favor of as much local government or state level government as possible rather than a, a exaggerated role for the federal government. Uh, liberalism tends to see government as a positive good and ways to improve or address problems in our society are often viewed by liberals as uh, uh, a need for greater government involvement. Um, this is uh, many liberals are in favor of the common core educational system, establishing a nationwide or federal uh, set of standards for education. Uh, many conservatives are opposed to that and believe that educational standards should be determined at the local or state level. The third view of government as an unnecessary evil would be, uh, would be de described as libertarianism or anarchism. Anarchism being the view that no that the state is unnecessary. Libertari not all libertarians would, would view government as a completely unnecessary evil. Many libertarians would agree that there needs to be local and state government, and they would emphasize, but they would emphasize the uh, 
maximum amount of liberty for the individual. There are both liberal as well as conservative, socially conservative or socially liberal libertarians, by the way. How strong a role should government play? This is on a uh, scale from less to more. The least would be the anarchists, the institutions of society exploit and corrupt. Anarchists are often fit in favor of uh, abolishing government and doing away with uh, any kind of government involvement. Libertarians uh, would emphasize the need for greater freedom for individuals, individual responsibility. Conservatives would like to have smaller government, less taxation, and uh, smaller government, less government spending. Moderates would be uh, would accept government government as it is as about right. Liberals may want more government regulation, for example, of Wall Street or the FDA or uh, agriculture. Uh, liberals be in favor of broad government uh, oversight. Radicals believe the current form of government needs to be overthrown and there needs to be drastic change. Here you see some pictures from the book. Um, if you look at these very carefully, you can see each one. The moderates, the anarchists look like bomb throwers. The libertarians look smug, drinking their martinis, probably wealthy. Reactionaries are also angry. Conservatives also look a little bit smug and wealthy. Uh, moderates are, they look kind of helpless. Progressives are gay in this picture. Radicals are down with the International Monetary Fund. The, the most appealing figure in this, in all of these pictures, is the lady who's reading about voting, the liberal lady. So uh, one of the important things to learn to do is to read uh, images and the person who designed these these images probably was a liberal because the the most sympathetic figure in this set of uh, pictures is the liberal woman. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's good to see where the bias is coming from. Uh, one form of demo uh, of government that the government that we're experienced with is democracy. Some characteristics of democracy is that it's based on the concept of popular sovereignty. People are sovereign, not leaders. In Great Britain, the queen is sovereign. But in the United States, it's the citizen, the people who are sovereign. That's a different form of government. We have freedom of speech, representative, le representative le legislature, which is not doing very well right now. We also have free elections. It's majority rule plus individual liberty respect and there's an attempt within democracy to respect and guarantee the rights of minorities and compromises for the good of all some more characteristics all at least ideally all are to, are to be treated as equal before the law all or most should be allowed to vote and participate fully in the political process public law applies equally to all at least this is the ideal within democracy the individual is primary, not the government, in a democracy. The emphasis is on individuals' dignity and worth, and a supportive environment is necessary. There are many forms of democracy. Direct democracy, which is, was practiced in ancient Ath classical Athens. Presidential democracy, which we have here in the United States. Unitary democracy versus federal. Written constitution versus no formal constitution. A republic versus a constitutional monarchy. In Great Britain, they have a constitutional monarchy. In the United States, we have a federal republic. And the uh, the idea of democracy originally came from the, uh, the uh, classical Greece in Athens. The idea of democracy as a direct democracy uh, is where we get our inspiration for democracy. This was called the ancient Greek polis. The police, uh, from which we get our modern word police, politics, political. Uh, the, the police was a form of Greek city-state government. And the Greeks came up with the idea of citizenship and constitutional government and checks and balances. Athens, Thebes, Sparta, most of the Greek city-states had a uh, constitution and they had citizens who participated in making laws. Now it's important to realize that the citizens in a Greek police were a minority of the population. 
women did not have citizenship, neither did slaves, and they composed the majority of the population. However, the idea, the ideas of democracy came from the Greeks. The Romans also developed a constitutional form of government. The Roman constitution was unwritten, uncodified, and it evolved with time. It had three elements, democracy, aristocracy, and monarchy. The democracy was covered in the legislative assemblies, the aristocracy by the Senate, and the monarchy in term-limited consuls. So it combined these three forms of, uh, of government. The ultimate source of sovereignty in the Roman Republic was the demos, or the people. The demos is the uh, Greek word for people from which we get our word democracy. Checks and balances developed between these three branches so as to minimize tyranny and corruption and maximize the likelihood of good government in Rome. It was pretty good because it lasted over a thousand years. The Roman Constitution also had a separation of powers similar to our own Constitution between these three branches of government, but it was not absolute. A constitutional crisis developed in 133 BC as a result of struggles between the aristocracy and the common people. This led to a period of conflict and crisis that ultimately led to the collapse of the Roman Republic and its eventual transformation into a more autocratic form of government called the Roman Empire under Julius Caesar, who took power in 49 BC and began to institute reforms. Uh, he was killed in 44 BC, assassinated. But eventually, after a civil war, his adopted son, Octavian, uh, also known as Augustus Caesar, became the Roman emperor in 31 BC. The Roman Empire lasted to uh, past 400 AD, and in the, uh, in the east, it lasted in the form of the Byzantine Empire to almost the uh, 15th century. Here's a picture of the Roman Empire at its greatest extent. Uh, another form of government that we have today is autocracy. An autocracy describes a government in which a single person or small group, also known as an oligarchy, has power. There were the ancient dictators, then monarchies emerged from feudal Middle Ages. Hereditary rulers often uh, were these, the method of succession. There's four mi primary characteristics, loyalty to the party and the state, rule by the leaders, one party monopoly, and control of the press, at least in terms of modern autocracies. Authoritarian autocracy forbids all activities which threaten its position. And one example is Catherine the Great in the 18th century Russia, also Francisco Franco of Spain, and African military juntas. Totalitarian autocracy is more severe and wants to control all aspects of an individual's life. An example in World War II was Nazism, and during most of the 20th century, Marxism in the Soviet Union or China, some would argue in Cuba as well. There are over 25 modern monarchs. Uh, most have limited power. Monarchies with a high degree of power exist in Swaziland, Bruni, Oman, Qatar, and Saudi Arabia. And here's a picture of the King of Saudi Arabia and the Queen of England. Some of the justifications for autocracy, uh, communists argue that workers are not truly free anyway and the government must control temporarily uh, and necessarily in order to develop a more just society. Autocrats in underdeveloped countries claim that they're caretaking for the future and that the environment is not yet right for democracy. Democracy can falter in clashing cultures such as Nigeria, Iraq, Afghanistan, and in the Congo. And here is a picture of the circle of let me back up circle of autocracy you see at the top is authoritarian autocracy at the bottom is totalitarian but on the right you see right wing autocracy and then the left the left wing left wing autocracies would include communist governments right wing autocracies would include fascist or conservative governments and that is our chapter on the forms and functions of government I hope you'll read the chapter, and I uh, wish you success on the quiz. Thank you.